Voilà, cher représentant de la... Dear representatives of the Jewish community, Chargé de mission, and I know that someone would love to be here today. It's Randy Evans who did a lot and uh, had to go back to the United States, and I know that he would love to to sit here. So a special point for for him. Si aujourd'hui je suis if I'm uh, here in front of you today, um, I would like also to thank my team uh, because uh, uh, the chairman of the foundation for uh, the memory uh, has a thank to the members of the foundation for the um, and uh, the consistory. And I know that without Mr. Gilnius and Ms. Lama, we wouldn't be here today. So I'm the one uh, signing uh, together with uh, Pierre Gramigna. But I know that our three staff members have uh, done a great work. And I would like to uh, thank them for this. Uh, they've spent hours and hours uh, on this agreement. I said it earlier on uh, when we were upstairs, it was very important for us, uh, together with the uh, Minister of Finance and myself, uh, representing our government today to sign this agreement. And uh, Mr. Chairman, you told me earlier on that maybe I wasn't aware of the importance of this moment for the Jewish community. And I must tell you, we share this point of view. For the Greater Chief of Luxembourg, and uh, the press just asked me earlier on, why now? Well, it is never too late, but I must admit that, uh, uh, well, in this matter, it will never have been too soon, and it was time. Time has come. Time has come to know one's histories, to know one's past, to know also one's responsibilities, and to recognize also one's responsibilities. To know them, well, that's what we've done, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, President, uh, you uh, paid credit to our government earlier on, but for us it was very important to recognize the mistakes of an administration committed uh, with regard to a specific community, and that this not only merits uh, reparation but also apologies. And uh, we are here uh, together with you today with the Foundation of the Shoah, with the uh, Consistory and with the WGRO and with the uh, embassy as uh, witnesses, uh, the embassies of the United States and the embassies of Israel. Um, we have signed this agreement, which was basically, um, well, uh, the logical uh, continuation and culmination of uh, uh, this uh, work which the government has wanted. It was like uh, looking deep into one's own history. And, well, I must admit, we do not know it all, but we know more already. And it is important for us to know more. You've said it. This government has recognized uh, uh, very early, um, well, uh, the history, uh, the construction of a monument uh, in the memory of the victims of the Shoah was an important symbol. And we did it uh, in a place where we knew that was important, because we all also wanted to confront the people passing by to the reality. We wanted the persons pa passing by to ask questions, raise questions. And I would even go further, Mr. Chief Rabbi, where are you? I've seen you earlier on. I don't know where you're sitting right now. Maybe he left, but uh, the fact that the Chief Rabbi takes the floor in the cathedral, the fact that we stop in front of the monument of the Kaddish, the fact that uh, uh, Mrs. Uh, Chairwoman and uh, Mrs. President for the Committee uh, for the uh, Remembrance of the Second World War, the fact that we have to all together the Jewish communities, uh, representatives of um, resistance fighters, representatives uh, of um, uh, forced conscripts, we all have the willingness to work together, and this is an important step in the remembrance work uh, in the history of the Grand Duchy of Luxembourg. For us, it was important, yes, to see the past, uh, to see 
the present, but also to see the future. And uh, the agreement um, incorporates these elements from the past, from the present, and from the future. We have an element uh, uh, which relates directly to uh, direct support to the survivors of the Shoah. And that's why I'm saying it was n it's never too early, uh, because there are less and less survivors of uh, the Shoah. And so it's uh, well a race, because it was important for these people to also be able to experience, to live uh, this uh, precious moment, our recognition of our responsibility. So with an annual budget of 120,000 euros over a period of 30 years, that's uh, the budget for the Luxembourg Foundation for the Memory of the Shoah. This same foundation will be endowed with additional missions such as the support of Jewish historical heritage sites uh, that are linked to the history of the Second World War. The convent of St. Fontaine has been acquired and an appropriate educational and commemorative center will be created there. And the annual budget of the Committee for the Remembrance of the Second World War has been set and increased to 65,000 euros. So it's a strong symbol of an inclusive approach of the three communities represented in this committee, namely the representatives of the resistance, the forced conscripts, and of course the victims of the Shoah. A research budget of two million euros will be set up. This budget will be devoted to three areas, the independent academic research, the research of origin, and work facilitating access to the national archives. In addition, a national strategy to combat anti-Semitism will be developed by the Luxembourg government together with the consistory. And finally, three working groups will continue their work or will be set up. The first working group will have uh, will focus on the identification and restitution, if necessary, of dormant bank accounts. The bank's concern will soon be contacted in this context by the Financial Sector Supervisory Commission, the CSSF. The banks concerned are those which already existed at the time or which have taken over the activities of such banks. And the funds will be transmitted either to the legitimate ears or to the Luxembourg Foundation for the Memory of the Holocaust. An identical working group will be set up for insurance issues. And with regard to works of art and other cultural property, a third working group will be created. Research on the origins will be carried out according to the principles of the international conventions that Luxembourg has signed in the past. And the institutions concerned are the following, the National Museum of History and Art, the collections of the Villa Vauban, and the National Library of Luxembourg. During the signing ceremony, I've already stressed that this agreement is an important first step. And the swift implementation of this agreement will ensure that Luxembourg and its Jewish community can together achieve their common goals to maintain an open and tolerant society, which we know, but which we have to maintain, to preserve. This is going to be one of the missions of this agreement. Values such as tolerance, humanism, and respect for human rights will be at the heart of this society. This agreement will not erase any suffering, but it will give back some dignity. It will not erase any suffering, none. And for me, it was important today, and I would like to thank Pierre right away because you know that the Minister of Finance has an important role to play when we sign conventions. And Pierre has always said, OK, let's go for it. So the two of us, we are part of this Luxembourg diversity with uh, Italian origins, with uh, uh, origins from Poland, from Russia, from France, from Luxembourg. And we are proud to live in a country where the fact of knowing that you are different because of your origins, because of your religion, because of your history. Yeah, we may be different for some, but we are considered as the same. And this is the strength of this country. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Prime Minister, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. When in 1993 the house survey in Mersch was emptied to make it the archive of Luxembourg literature, and not only documents were found, but also a white porcelain bull 
of the prestigious brand Hutschenreuter, which all belonged to the Davidson family of bankers from Hildesheim, Germany. Siegfried Davidson and his wife Anna had come to Luxembourg to seek refuge from the Nazi regime. While Mr. Davidson died on December the 18th, 1941, at the age of 70 in Mersch, his wife was deported first to Saint Fontaine and then to Theresienstadt, Theresien, where she died on August the 12th, 1942, at the age of 65. Another story, another emotion. Michel Bernard, born in Merxheim, near Mulhouse in France, was interned in Saint Fontaine and then deported on the 28th of July, 1942, to Theresienstadt, where he died three weeks later at the age of 76. And a few weeks ago, I was given a prayer book bearing his name, indicating Fünfbrunnen, Saint Fontaine, as the place of residence of its owner, in which are inserted small sheets of handwritten paper, either in ballpoint pen or pencil, in German, the work of Michel Bernard. These two stories bear witness to the tragic destinies of foreign and stateless Jews. Um, then, you know, uh, as early as May the 10th, 1940, Luxembourg was a victim of the Nazi invasion and occupation, and uh, it, didn't make, it did not take long for the occupier to impose the evil Nuremberg racial laws, including Jews from working life, stripping them of all their possessions and expelling them from the country, finally deporting those who had not managed to flee or leave the country under threat. But the War Damages Act of 1950 excluded foreign and stateless Jews from compensation a proportion of three-fourths of Jews. And it should be noted that in 1967, the law on the victims of um, Nazism blatantly occulted Jews. And what about the bank accounts and life insurance policies, which have been mentioned by the Prime Minister, that, has, that have never been returned to their years or beneficiaries and whose fate has known only silence since the war? On this symbolic day of the 27th of January, the day commemorating the liberation of Auschwitz, a terrible injustice is put to an end, that of the exclusion of stateless and foreign Jews from any measure of reparation, compensation. What is more, it's a, finally a recognition of their terrible fate and thus the last act of reintegration of Jews in the history of Luxembourg. For it's exactly 20 years that the Jewish community has been fighting to begin a clear work of remembrance and reparation, compensation. The study commission on the spoliations of Jews during the Second World War had taken nine long years to finalize its report, and it was later established that certain conclusions did not match with the reality, especially when the report stated that the commission had not found any discrimination in the restitution and compensation of Jewish victims. But in the meantime, Prime Minister, you have uh, worked for the memory of the Shoah like no other political decision maker since the war. And I mean the apologies you presented to the Jewish community on the 9th of June 2015 in the House, the erection of the National Monument to the Victims of the Shoah in Luxembourg, inaugurated on the 17th of June 2018 and the creation of the Luxembourg Foundation for the Memory of the Shoah in October 2018, which uh, I am very honored to share. And finally, through the creation of the Committee for the Memory of the Second World War, which, um, uh, if I'm well informed, is your project, you already have brought the integration of the Jews as a group of victims into the collective memory of the nation. The agreement we're signing today contains many provisions, all of which are important. Allow me in turn to comment on some of them. Of course, the financial support to the last survivors of the Shoah, uh, you've said it, it's never too late. That's doing justice to this generation, generation late but still in time. Second, the purchase of the site of the convent of Saint Fontaine, the only place uh, in Luxembourg where old and sick Jews were parked and uh, then uh, used for the deportation of Jews from Luxembourg to transform it into a center of memory and fight against all prejudices. Third, the allocation of important funds for historical research, uh, which it never ends, and the important support for our foundation, you've said it. Finally, the agreement incorporates a historical duty that we have tirelessly pursued. And I would also like to thank the Minister of Finance for this. Uh, I'm talking 
about how to determine which Jewish bank accounts and insurance policies still exist today because the victims are for the most part no longer of this world. It is another measure of historical justice to finally collect these funds and transfer them to the foundation so that we can use them for the work of remembrance. We can thus pursue together and resol resolutely this work of memory, if which is so necessary in our society. So let us therefore carry this message of hope and brotherhood so that never again um, the uh, Hungarian writer Imre Kertes, winner of the 22 Nobel Prize for Literature, called Beings Without Destiny. I would like to thank you. Do you have any questions so far? You've got microphones on the left and on the right hand side in case you want to ask questions once. Um, I'm asking twice. Going, going, gone. Okay, thank you very much.